it's important to remember that most alcohol that people are drinking has a, a lot of sugar or starch in it. There's a lot of carbohydrate coming with that. Now, alcohol is its own macronutrient. It is neither fat nor carbohydrate. It is its own thing. Um, so when I'm talking about alcohol coming with a lot of carbohydrate, I don't mean that they're the same thing. I mean, it's pretty common to get sweetened alcohols. And the irony is I've never tasted a drop. So I don't really know. Um, I just know from a purely academic um, perspective here. One of the things about ethanol, which is the alcohol part of this, is that when it begins to get metabolized through these what's called dehydrogenase enzymes, but it changes what's called the redox state. So the balance of, of these equations, uh, of these variables, these molecules that are oxidized or reduced, and it ultimately tips this in such a direction that it begins to inhibit the liver's ability to burn fat, to break down fat. So alcohol is mucking up the, the gears involved in fat burning. Also, ethanol at the same time is activating lipogenic enzymes, in particular one called fatty acid synthase. This is part of the de novo lipogenesis pathway. And then one final comment on alcohol is that it normally, um, the liver is capable of creating fat and then releasing it into the body on what is referred to as um, triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. And the most relevant of these being VLDL, which is then converted to LDL, which you've, of course, heard of. Uh, so that is one of the ways where the liver is moving fat out by sharing it with the rest of the body. And that is not a, a problematic process. It is a good and indeed necessary process. This is part of that soccer mom role of the liver saying, hey, I've got some fat here. Let's start sharing it with the rest of the body, which is good. The body can burn that fat or use those lipids for any number of, of purposes. But um, ethanol blocks that effect. It inhibits the production of these triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, so blocking the assembly and the secretion of the VLDL, which ultimately forces the liver to hold on to more of its fat rather than packaging it and, again, releasing it. All right, so we have covered a lot here. Um, and at the first part of it, when we were talking about free fatty acid uptake and de novo lipogenesis, I really hope my explanation of insulin and the dynamics of insulin feeding the fat and telling the liver what to do with the fat um, resonates and leaves an impression on you because there's such a beautiful nuance there that as much as some people will say um, that the liver is getting fat just because the fat tissue is insulin resistant, well, that's just some part of the story that you have to appreciate that within the insulin resistant body in a broader context, it's the elevated insulin then that is promoting the or forcing the storage of that fat within the liver. And then, of course, we reviewed um, fructose and alcohol, both of which, of course, have very meaningful contributions. Now, what can be done? First of all, what can you even know? Um, the best, most definitive way to confirm fatty liver disease is through some imaging, uh, whether it is ultrasound or MRI. You can actually get a, a picture of the fat within the liver. That's not common. It's more invasive, more time intensive and expensive. What is very, very common is measuring liver enzymes, alanine um, aminotransferase and aspartate aminotransferase, often simply abbreviated it and how you might know them simply as ALT and AST. ALT and AST are these enzymes that are heavily enriched within the liver. Now, just as a brief aside, they are also released from muscle tissue, which is one of the reasons why if you're going to get a deep dive thorough blood exam, do not work out really hard at least within 24 hours and maybe even 48 hours just to make sure you're not going to get a false positive. I speak on this topic with some passion because I once was um, told I had fatty liver disease um, which was ironic, uh, again, because I've never touched a drop of alcohol um, in my life, and I'm metabolically healthy. And I tried to convince the clinician at the time, this was many years ago, that it was simply because, that it was a false positive, that it was actually just because I'd worked out too hard. Um, and sure enough, a repeat blood test when I was a little milder with my workout showed perfectly normal levels. So just as a reminder, these enzymes are also expressed in muscle. So if you've done a lot of muscle work, 
um, you're going to be flagged as having fatty liver disease, even though your liver could be perfectly healthy. Um, those l levels do matter. And if the ALT to AST ratio, so take ALT and divide it by AST, if that's higher than one, getting closer up to two, that's generally viewed to be a sign of fatty liver disease. Now, what can you do? Of course, as usual, when it comes to metabolic problems, the standard of care is going to be drugs. So let me just talk about that very, very briefly. One of the most effective drugs for fatty liver disease is a class of drug called the PPAR gamma activist, uh, agonists rather, PPAR gamma agonists. You've heard me talk about these in a previous metabolic classroom. And it's interesting because these are a class of drugs that actually promote the synthesis of new fat cells. So it activates fat cell hyperplasia. Earlier, a moment ago, when I talked about the insulin resistant fat cells, I used the word hypertrophy. When the fat cells undergo hypertrophy, they get really, really big. And when you take those really, really big insulin resistant hypertrophic fat cells, and then within the body inject or take in some PPAR gamma agonists, which is this class of drug I'm talking about, you now start reproducing fat cells. And so the fat cells can all get a little smaller, even though they are now more abundant. And remember, 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 when it comes to insulin resistance, it is not the total amount of fat a person has, but the size of each fat cell that matters most. And so by taking a PPAR gamma ag agonist, the size of the fat cells are getting smaller on a person and they're becoming more insulin sensitive, which is then resulting in less free fatty acids coming from the fat cells, which is taking away the leading contributor to fatty liver disease. So it's no surprise as you are helping the fat paradoxically store more fat, but also become more insulin sensitive, you are now sparing the liver. But again, it comes at quite a cost where now the individual is getting substantially fatter. Uh, but again, that does spare the liver from having to store that fat. Now, that is the conventional intervention, which is going to be drug-based, but we are not conventional in our thinking here within the metabolic classroom. So at its simplest, the most effective strategy for reversing or preventing fatty liver disease is control carbs. By controlling carbohydrates, you are allowing insulin to come down. Um, when it comes to eating, there's no better way to drop insulin. Now, of course, fasting matters enormously, but you can't fast forever. So when you do eat, control carbs.